All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining uh, and appreciate our friends here over 100 on the Zoom channel. We're going to get started here in about 30 seconds and appreciate you just joining up and getting an update on what's happening, uh, as we call it, the returning to learning. Right? The most critical piece of our work is, is around learning, being a learner-centered lab school. We truly appreciate all of you coming together. So just some quick introductions. We do have uh, Christina here. She's smile and wave, Christina. Can help monitor the um, YouTube channel. So the YouTube chat. We have Sai here, our ex officio president. We also have um, Bob and Casey. Can you guys still hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay, perfect. My screen looks like it's freezing up, but I just want to make sure we do some proper introductions and then get away with um, moving on to this. So we'll probably start with just an overview of where we're going today. Um, so let me put up this screen. So today is about returning to learning and here's a bit of our agenda. So we'll have a poll, a sense of appreciation, uh, some messages from our D39 collaborative and teacher perspective. Uh, there's this really fantastic PUSD guidebook, uh, return to campus and PUSD contingency plan. Uh, virtual learning and some alternative programs. So we'll run through that. And we also have uh, the sites uh, that you guys put on. So we'll be showing some data. So the first thing I'd like to do is put a poll. I know our friends on YouTube won't see this, but the question is on the poll, how are you feeling right now with returning to learning in your decision making? So here's the poll for our friends on Zoom. There's 100 in our room. It says, how are you feeling about your upcoming returning to learning decision? And the two options are nervous or confident. Nervous or confident. Go ahead and put that in the chat box on YouTube just to get a sense of how you're feeling right now. All right, the polls are coming in. Take three more seconds, just your gut reaction and we wanna share that out. All right, so here's the polling and end the poll. I'll share the results and I'll just say them out loud as well for our YouTube friends. So the, here's the results. It is out of the 100, 72% are feeling nervous, 28% are feeling confident. So the work today is really to help um, navigate some of this feelings that we're, we're sensing uh, because we know that uh, returning to learning is so critical to us. It's the greatest gift we can give our kids. So let me stop sharing that. And uh, we'll come back to that, see if hopefully we have a little bit better um, sense of feeling after we navigate these next steps. So um, I do have an announcement I'd like to make. So maybe this will help at the very beginning and we're gonna go a little bit backwards to go forwards. So let me share that screen again. Okay. So I would like to show this screen and maybe this will help a little bit. Design 39 Campus Virtual. So yes, um, the district was very empathetic and we will be able to have our own Design 39 Campus Virtual experience along with on-campus learning. So that's gonna be a big deal for us. We'll look at the data specifically. And the beautiful piece with this is not just for Design 39 Campus, this is across the district. And so this is about every school having that agency. I see Julie waving her hands, a big win for everyone. Um, and that takes a lot of courage on the superintendent's part, the Board of Education, Carol. We have Doug, who's on the YouTube live stream. Um, we don't know all the answers yet, but what we do know is that we can solve these challenges locally. And so I think that's going to be a big, big win for all of us. And I hope as we navigate through this few of these slides, you'll feel good about that. So with that appreciation, I would like to just kind of show who are those people that are working behind the scenes, right, for us. Um, you know, we see the messages come across. This is our superintendent, Dr. Phelps. And it's probably been the most trying time of any leader at this era to navigate all the, the political pieces and also the personal pieces. She has her own child, um, you know, with the supervision that we have with Carol and her team, Kimmy and Doug, and all the team members there. It takes a lot of effort and energy to make that happen. Um, and this is also our board of education. They too have to put themselves out there. So Michelle, Ginger, TJ, um, Kimberly, Dr. Patel, and Emily, our student board member. You know, they, they get lots of, <laughs> lots of conversations coming their way and they're trying to make the best decisions. And for them to have that humility and also the ability to pivot for all of us across PUSD to make those best decisions uh, is really appreciated. And so I just wanna make sure we take that moment. 
also appreciation for our families, right? Because you, you're you navigating this. We started March 13th with you all and you were the teachers and we were in crisis teaching and you navigated that with us beautifully. And we owe you a tremendous amount of thanks. And then lastly, our students and teachers, we, we don't have school without them. And so to our staff and our teachers, our instructional assistants, custodians, everybody who makes it work. So a big appreciation because um, it's that trust, you know, to be able to say that, hey, we have this beautiful campus across, right? So it's not just Design 39 Campus Virtual Academy, it's Oak Valley Virtual Academy, it's Del Sur Virtual Academy, it's, right? So every school gets to advocate and navigate what's best for them and we'll partner together. So I know um, our, my buddy over there um, at Oak Valley, if there's a challenge we're gonna face, we're gonna pick each other up and we're gonna work collectively and collaboratively to figure that out. So we don't have all the answers, but what, what we do know is we have amazing people. And I think with that sentiment, knowing that we're gonna be able to, to work forward. And so we'll kind of lay out a few plans to help us with this. And hopefully that'll send, set you at a little bit of ease and then we'll keep navigating. Remember, we're in July. So we're not two days before school starts, we're still in July. Um, when does school start? We'll talk a little bit about that and what we know at this point. Um, with that said, uh, there was some comments uh, made in our Padlet wall around, you know, how are the teachers feeling? And so I'd like to give a moment for Julie just to speak a little bit from the perspective of our learning experience designers at Design39. Julie? Um, thanks, Joe. I really appreciate it. I think my first thing is this is amazing pivot by our district. Um, it shows um, empathy for the stakeholders um, and their connections to our school communities. It provides us with an opportunity to design authentic, relevant, competency-based and fun experiences that we're used to. Um, we know that education is not about doing school to our learners. It's about working in concert with all our community members to design and, and provide experiences based on strong relationships, trust, competencies, and authentic differentiated learning opportunities. Um, we now have the, we have been empowered to design, which is what we do best. Um, yes, safety is a priority. We have a lot of things to figure out, masks, distancing, temperature checks, um, contact tracing, mandating spaces, um, hallway crowding, air conditioning, airflow. I mean, all that, but you know what? We can do this together. Um, as Joe Mentz, uh, mentioned, you know, we will come and figure this out together. Um, what I'm really proud of is that the district considered our social emotional health of learners as key in the learning plan. Um, we've already been away from our friends and other LEDs for quite a while. Um, with the district's new decision, we can actually start the learning with social emotional well being, familiar faces, known quantities, and for our new families, hope, hopefully, the knowledge and the support of our families who have already been here. Um, the district has empowered us to solve our own problems, which is huge. Um, they will hopefully be there to support our health safety mandates um, and let us create those learning uh, environments based on relationships, community needs, competencies, and demonstrating agency for our learners. I truly appreciate, as I know all our LEDs do, the outpouring of support, care, and, and the heartfelt messages that you always send us. Um, please know that teachers want to come back, but again, it's about safety and empathy and working <clears throat> together in concert and not just being dictated as to what we will provide for our students. Um, I also want to really thank Joe for his continuous push for school autonomy and the district to trust us to solve our own unique problems. Um, I want to also thank Cy Niren for his three-page letter to the board members and the DO in support of listening to what we want. And I really think Christina Adamson nailed it with her message about our community, our school, our decision. We only have control of how we respond. And I know we will respond well knowing that we are empowered to do so. So thank you all. I mean, I think this is a great decision. Thank you. Thank you. Julie so much. And again, Doug Johnson, he's my supervisor. Uh, he is also the founding principal of Del Sur Elementary. So he knows about being in this space and, and building something awesome. So we're really proud to have Doug on our team who is also navigating this with us at um, the district level. So we appreciate that and appreciate the empathy that we got specifically from Carol and team. Um, with that, we'd like to also hear from the perspective from our collaborative, who's also um, the voice for us as well, our Design 39 collaborative, Bob, if you would be so kind. Sure, I'll be happy to, Joe. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. 
Uh, on behalf of the collaborative, uh, Casey and I just wanted to share with all of you that we continue to be an advocate and a voice for the parents and the rest of the community. We can't thank you enough for all the support, uh, everybody being very authentic and sharing your concerns, sharing uh, the empathy. Uh, appreciate all the comments on the Padlets and, and folks upvoting them and so forth. And uh, as Casey probably, I think as most of you saw and Casey shared, we did have an opportunity to send a letter based on everybody's concern and feedback to the district and the, uh, and the board as well and, uh, and expressed all the thoughts and feelings and all the concern that everybody felt and the fact that we wanted to have an option. There's a reason why we all made a choice to come to Design 39 Campus and we wanna be able to continue to have that choice based on the way that our kids are used to learning and the way that our LEDs uh, teach and, and uh, the methodology that goes into this community and, and being based on design. So as Joe shared, uh, good news is we, we have an opportunity to do that and be able to continue to have a choice and uh, have our kids continue to learn in the environment and with the consistency that they're used to. And Casey, I'll hand it to you. Any, uh, any other thoughts you would like to add? Yeah, I think Casey's going to join up when it comes to the safety sp spaces and add in some extra details. Um, so thank you again, Bob, and being a voice for all of us. And um, again, uh, you know, this is not just for Design 39. This is for all of PUSD and everyone like us wanting to advocate and navigate with equity um, for all of our families. So uh, again, um, just let me get right into it. Then We're, how did how did we get to this place uh, to go backwards, to go forwards? Um, so let me do that. Just got a text from Doug. So he's in the meeting room. So I want to make sure I can answer that too. So uh, let me uh, throw up, not throw up, <laughs> let me <laughs> put some slides up for you <laughs> uh, just to talk about how we got to this place. So uh, let me do full screen for y'all. All right. So as you know, on July 17th, right around that date, um, the governor made an announcement that uh, schools won't be opening unless we get off of the um, monitoring list. And so I just put together that over the last seven days. And you can see, unfortunately, we the trend line um, has not been in our favor yet. So we still have great responsibility as a community in San Diego County to get our kids back in campus. We need to make sure that we're doing all we can to do the physical distancing and do all we can to wear a mask. And right, so this is July 19th, July 20th, 145, 16. There's a little bit, hey, maybe some hope there. And then the 22nd and then um, the 23rd. So if we're looking at this and specifically August 16th is if we did to go with that September 2nd date, the way it works as you know, maybe even better than I do, uh, three days of, of that data where it's you're off the monitoring list and then you officially get off right after the three days and then the governor is saying 14 days. So that would put us right around that August 16th date, right? And so that's a, a, a place that we're monitoring. So what I've told our teachers, uh, staff and LEDs is that and we need to put a mindset around um, virtual learning and understanding that. And because we know we owe you a much better version of distance learning than you had. And there's everyone across the nation wants virtual learning to be better than it was holistically. We understand that there's so many things that we need to do within that space. And that's why we need to co-design with you and get that empathy to say what would make it a great learning experience. So with that, um, there's gonna be some design gems that we'll be working on with you. Um, here's some dates that are going to be coming up. We'll talk a little bit about this specifically. There's this POSD guidebook with frequently asked questions. And there is a massive amount of um, support and resources that have been put into this guidebook. I'll show you that shortly. You'll actually get a copy of it. I'll just show you the first page because um, district is still working on the last details. Uh, Christine Peck and team have uh, been really fabulous in that space. Uh, so that's a guidebook that will answer a lot of the safety protocols. Um, so look for that coming out, I believe, tomorrow. Um, I think they're putting the final touches. Uh, the teacher survey is going out and uh, that's probably gonna pivot. This was, right, this is hot off the presses. This just happened right now, probably about three hours ago uh, that we could have our own uh, virtual learning academy um, across the district. Uh, parent commitment form, most likely it's gonna come from the district still because there's certain schools that don't have the capacity to run the surveys the way they do. So uh, we're still looking for guidance. Um, if that's gonna be coming from the district still is my understanding or if we were going to run that from our campus. 
on July 27th, that's Monday, I'm going to do office hours by span. So look for more information on that. So if you have specific questions, so four o'clock will be K1, K3, four five will be at 430, and then five o'clock will be six eight. So we'll have specific office hours to just chat with Joe um, and maybe a, a span rep that can be in that space to just continue to answer your questions so that you feel that you're making the best decision for you as our superintendent has shared. She really wants you to make sure that you're feeling good with that choice. Um, and then it, as of um, six hours ago, this was a, a thing that was gonna happen. So there's a teacher information meeting so they can continue to ask questions, but uh, the district parent town hall is was tentatively sent for July 30th. That might pivot a little bit. So just be on the lookout for updated information uh, to ensure that when you do make your final decision, uh, which is probably gonna be launched on Sunday, uh, with the 31st, I believe, is the last date to make your choice. So you'll have a full week. Okay, so where did we, we start? Uh, as we know, we, we heard there was two options. There was the POSD Virtual Learning Academy and the uh, on-site campus learning. There was some chatter. We pulled us together and we said, wow, what might it look like? Would it really be an authentic interest for our community to have a Design 39 virtual learning experience? Um, and you can see right there, it was pretty split, 249 for the uh, Design 39 campus virtual learning experience. And then on campus learning was 244. You can see the percentage breakdown below there. Um, the others were specifically around a hybrid-ish model and then individual species. And there's still interest in homeschool and that is a thing. So just no, so you know that homeschool is still an option. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, Poway is uh, ramping up so that more um, parents and students can participate in the PUSD homeschool option. As you know, we want to keep all of our kids in the PUSD family. Okay, so then we asked our teachers, um, or sorry, rather the parent survey, um, because then we pivoted and said, okay, what if we had a, um, a staggered start, a flexible model, where you would come on campus, but it would be a hybrid, so half um, a.m. and then uh, in the afternoon, uh, the, the second group would come. And you could see we that increased by 10%. So having a staggered start uh, increased that interest because that was reducing class sizes and allowing us to have more physical distancing. This was coming at the same time probably that grades three through 12 are gonna mandatory mass. So you can see like as we start to tune what would make it safe to come back on campus, um, this was one of those areas that started to show some promise for our community. So we want to keep looking at that. The ultimate decision for that is going to be based off of the health um, protocols, district advisement, and all that. So we don't have a, an answer yet if we're going to be starting with uh, virtual learning collectively or if we're going to be starting with the, the campus um, and at-home learning with D39 teachers. So just let us kind of navigate that, give us the grace to do that with district and figure that out. Okay, and then um, as you know, when we had the AM, PM kindergarten, this was pretty evident. You know, you could see AM, 270 families want the AM, PM, 103. So this, there's a lot of questions around this. We have to cluster by families, clearly. Like if we go into some type of AM, PM model, we have to figure this out. The easy solution would be alpha, right? A through M, L through Z, whatever, okay. I, I don't know if there's great interest in that. That's a quick solution. And I think if we have a month to figure it out, like what's the best solution if we go with a um, flexible learning model. So that would be something for us to more flex. So you can see right there, there's a design challenge that we would need to navigate. And then um, need for daycare. This is really critical because there are families that need all day learning um, five days a week. And so this shows us that 74 of our families need um, all day care. So if they came in the morning, they would still need um, something in the afternoon. Is that paid or non-paid? My hope is that we could figure out a way to, to keep learning going. So we're gonna talk more specifically about other detailed plans around. So that brought us then uh, navigating with district. And so let me stop sharing. So that brought us to today. So where we district heard this, they've not only heard from us, they've heard from students and uh, high school kids who are saying, wow, I have these beautiful relationships with my high school um, chess teacher or um, uh, my no place for hate teacher or whoever it might be. So maintain those relationships across. So Del Norte is gonna need to uh, navigate that as well. 
So Del Norte will be figuring out how to best service, service and support the students. I believe uh, principal is gonna be offering something next week uh, for our parents who have kids in high school. All right, so that's that bit. So I wanna get a little bit more into the nuts and bolts of what might that look like if we start um, on campus, how would you make your decision? Okay, so the first piece is, my understanding is that we would start with your decision for a Design 39 campus experience, either at home or on campus. And we would have that then, you'd make that selection, then we figure out that with that design challenge of our teachers who have that at, at home option. And then that would cluster then the teachers who would then work with that homeroom students. So if we started at, obviously with no, with we're not the ability to come onto campus because uh, we're still on the monitoring list. My hunch is that, this is only Joe's hunch, we haven't designed it yet, is that we would still start with you and your homeroom teacher with that um, at home teacher homeroom experience. And then you already would start with that teacher who's gonna be with you when we have the opportunity to come back onto campus. So that way we're not like splitting you up mid-year, we would start with that group of that cluster of students. I'm not articulating that great, but the idea is that you would know who your homeroom teacher is out of the gate and you'd either start with them at home or you start with them on campus, okay? And that idea then is from there, we would then say, okay, this homeroom LED and this cluster of teachers, they can then work with this cluster of students and teachers at school. So there's a partner and a relationship between that. So it's not just you're dissected from the community experience, you're actually brought in, the kids are brought in and partnering up in that collaborative model that we have with design thinking. Every morning, 7.45 to 8.45, our whole staff is collaborating. So how do we get our LEDs and, and students to be in that experience? And so then when we look at the Padlet wall, you'll see some opportunities where that might be a great design challenge for us to figure out and navigate. So the first hunch, we're gonna be communicating out with you much more, but the idea is right now you feel that as a parent, it's not safe to come back on campus even with a split um, day. Then you make that decision, we partner you up, we create a homeroom with you and a virtual learning Design 39 teacher that's gonna also partner up with a cluster of on-campus teachers, okay? Or you say, I really wanna be on campus, I'm gonna start, I'm okay with this slow roll up. Um, it's either gonna be fully on campus or it's gonna be a, um, a flexible schedule and you'll have that homeroom teacher. That's the current Joe model, it's not the model, it's just the model that we need to start with and then we build from there. Knowing that you're gonna be part of the Design 39 campus experience or you say, I'd like to have the homeschool PUSD. So I wanna take on more of the responsibility of the learning at home I want to be part of the Power Unified Homeschool Program. Okay, so let me show some slides, maybe to navigate that a little bit better than I articulated, and um, do that here. Okay, so this reopening guidebook, I'll show you that shortly. Um, and so right now, as we know, Power Unified is maintaining current class sizes in both in-person and the Virtual Learning Academy, as of today. That might change tomorrow. So what I shared with Carol today, Carol Osborne, um, our associate superintendent, is that our parents really need to know because it changed our parents' interest by 10% in the positive. So our parents need to know that prior to making a decision. Is it going to be in a flexible model where we're reducing class sizes or are we not? And I think that's gonna be really important to our families um, that we have that. So our pitch to, to Carol and team was that we have that data prior to you making that decision so that you know you're either committing to a soft roll up to you know, full campus or you're committing to just being at home. Now, again, all of these decisions for you can then be flexed currently was at the semester break. And then we would do, you know, if there's something really critical that we could flex out and in, in because we're, we're, we're designing this internally, we'd probably have a little bit more flexibility to kind of get you in the program or out, but um, we need to start someplace, okay? Um, if we did a staggered start, what would it look like? Um, and this is the opportunity that we're trying to partner up also with the other middle schools. Um, so all the middle schools are landing on something like this as of yesterday. So uh, what we're trying to do is really be in alignment across the district. So this is not just the staggered schedule for Design 39 Campus. This is the staggered schedule for Oak Valley and Bernardo Heights. And, and so trying to figure this out um, so that the reason for this. So the question came up often is why not 
uh, at A, B schedule. Monday, full day, Tuesday, not, Wednesday, full day, right, like that. So the reason is, and I shared this uh, publicly with our teams, is that if we truly believe in the social emotional well-being of our kids, we need high touch points, meaning we need that social in, in-person interaction on the daily. And, and having that experience on campus on the daily, we feel is, is probably the best bet to go with that. And it showed from our parents that that actually had a, a pretty good interest. So this is where we're landing right now, this idea. So if session one is 8.50 to 11.35, so we're looking at two hours and 45 minutes of in-person instruction. So what happens in that instruction? These are the critical bits about a learner-centered lab school. What is it that we do really well? Collaboration, right? Impact projects, things that you, you really need to be in person to do. That's what would happen. The things that you could do after hours, like when you're out either at home doing that self paced one to two hours of home learning, what are those things that can happen? Alexia, IXL, the, an impact project, a thing you're working on that extends your learning as well, but it's connected back to the learning. So that's kind of what it would look like. Or session two, you have that self paced learning in the morning and then uh, you come back in the afternoon, 12, 15 to three o'clock. This would lower the class sizes um, in that. Key features, if we have to all launch in a virtual learning experience because we're still on the monitoring list. We, as we shared earlier, need to do more of this live in-person instruction, either it's pre-recorded or something. So a way that our kids are really connected on the daily. We also need to monitor screen time. We don't want six hours of kids on a screen. So all these things that we need to like that tension points. So that blending of instructional models, and I think we were really starting to find a sweet spot towards the end. So it's not starting from scratch. We're starting with basically three months of learning and navigating and painful conversations and like trying to figure that out. And we need to design with you, the parents, the students, to figure out like what are those sweet spots that we can really hit and make sure that if we have to go through this thing because we're on the monitoring list for two weeks, three weeks, a month, like. We don't wanna be scrambling. So we need to be thinking today, what can we do? So come August, come September, we're really hitting the ground running with that. So social emotional daily, we need to have small group differentiated instruction also for acceleration on our EL kids and 504s and special education. That's a critical component, right? How do we support our students with special needs? And maybe there's some magic we could create there. Maybe that's a space that we can bring them on for the longer part of the day or not. So we need to be really thoughtful. There is no taboo conversation. It's everything's open. And then we keep tuning and tuning and tuning until we get to that best version yet. Um, and so that's what we're looking for. Yes, feedback and, and assessment regularly. We know that from uh, neuroscience and from the cognition in terms of how do we, how does our brain learn? It has to have regular feedback and reflection and thinking. Um, so we're super excited about that. Checking in, you know, we had our weekly Thursday parent meetings that was super helpful just to get that, that pulse check. Are we in the right place? Um, and uh, so we're looking to grow from what we did last year. So this is if we have to start with online everybody across the district, across San Diego County rather. All right. So why con the continued press for, I, I think I want to just share this. I'm going to stop screen sharing for a second because I want you to see my face on this one. So the question is why keep pressing for uh, on-campus learning? First, firstly, there's 60% of PUSD that wants on-campus learning. And you need to actually disaggregate the data on that to understand that um, when you go across the freeway, there's um, not as the, the high level of socioeconomic status that we have in 92127. So we need to be building for equity, which means that we need to take care of all of our families that maybe can't work at home because they don't have that opportunity because they're not at Qualcomm who's doing that or Microsoft, right? And so they have to have both families working. So they have to have a space for them to go. So there's a need there for on-campus learning and not to politicize it. And we need to be that place of safety for our kids. And that's why having these other options and we're solving those challenges collectively together feels good. Um, for me as well, like when you look at who is most impacted by COVID, it is our marginalized groups, our black brothers and our brown sisters. And so when we're looking at who might get priority to stay at home, we would wanna look at our families who maybe might be impacted by that, or our teachers who are impacted by that. So if I think of Anthony Jackson, our PE teacher, African-American, I would wanna say, Anthony, you know, do you wanna be on campus or not? And you should get priority because you're gonna, your health is gonna be impaired more greatly if you get sick. That's what the data shows. So I want us to really think from that equity lens always and, um, 
as you know, that's a place that Design 39 has been leading with our Black parent group. Um, so it's not enough just to say all you know, Black Lives Matter, it's what are you doing to prove that on the daily for our marginalized groups? All right, so just thank you for letting me put out a speech for a second. Um, lastly is um, here, I want you to know that that's still a safe space for you to operate in. Uh, PUSD is ramping that up. Uh, grades TK through eight. So this is the Poway Home Education Program. It's on the website of Poway Unified. So last we heard that there wasn't enough spots or teachers. If that is your interest, PUSD will figure out a way to service and support you. That means teachers will go into that space and people might even want to sign up for that because that's something that's of interest to them as well as a teacher. So they have to have multiple subjects credential. Remember, you are now the primary teacher though in that space and you're checking in I think it's once a week um, and there's much more information on that in the website. Okay, so that takes us through there. I think the next step is to probably pause and see what are some themes that are rock tumbling in the chats. Uh, we'll start with Sai, what's rock tumbling in the Zoom chat? I think there's a question about um... The AMPM model. Um, so, just I mean, the question was we didn't get any communication. I think it was a poll that you did during the last town hall. So, just want to clarify that. Um, the question about lunch and the AMPM session, um, and for kids who rely especially for lunch at school. Yeah, we'll be for sure providing lunch and probably more of the grab and go style side. So, lower touch points, um, navigating that. We still have to work with food and nutrition, uh, clearly using many more spaces on campus for kids to eat lunch um, and then navigating transitions. So if you have an A and P and model, how do you navigate transitions? So we're not all on top of each other. That probably means routes like we see in stores, one way in, one way out, things like that, Sai. Um, question about virtual learning, if it would be for six months, for the year, like what the option, if they pick the virtual learning as an option, what that could look like. Time yeah, thank you, Sai. So that would be, um, we were still understanding that's within the district's um, direction of you have a, a year, a half year commitment, so a semester. So first semester, you would make a commitment, then we would pivot and uh, see where we are with the state of affairs with, uh, you know, yeah. So my understanding currently, Sai, is going to be by semester. Question about looping, for, especially for younger kids, if uh, they go all virtual, is looping a consideration for um, um, rostering? Yeah, we. it's the same question our teachers have. We wanna honor relationships. Uh, that's how they were built this year at the end of the year. So moving into this year, if school was to open back up, there's looping built in, there's relations built in. So we would probably have to go back and navigate again and how we might resort those. Because one option could be um, that we maintain the same rosters. So you might have half your kids already on campus and half of them are virtual, but then you have a virtual teacher that's helping. And so there's a way to do that if we collaborate across teachers, but I need our team to really navigate that side. So as it starts, yes, looping and a lot more design work. Um, question about- Julie's taking down Julie's taking down questions because I know she's already designing in her head. So. A question about collaboration opportunities for kids in the virtual program. Would kids be able to partake in deep dives and explorations? Yeah, and that's the piece that's really critical. Um, I think in, of, even of music, uh, Tiffany Spencer did a magical job. Like just, she had one-on-ones with every kid in the music department uh, on Design 39. So how do we ensure that kids get access to things on campus that don't naturally fit well? So Tiffany was a great example of how to make that work. So was our uh, minds and Mo minds and motions teacher they pivoted along the way to figure out how to make that happen so giving access to the deep dives and explorations these are things that we need to hear right out the front so when we're doing these design jams these are things that are critical and important to parents and you'll see those same themes side in the padlet um the question about would the d39 when will d39 commit to ampm model versus full day model would it be prior to the busd commitment deadline or yeah, we're going to be in alignment with Power Unified uh, with a, we're going to call it a flexible learning model. So the flexible learning model would be AMPM. And we're following uh, uh, districts uh, need on that so that we all PUSD would either be that or not. 
So it's not just site by site for that decision as I understand it today. And a um, question about TKK since it's their, they're brand new to the school and virtual is probably hard for them because they don't know or understand the process or no other classmates. What could that look like? Yeah, I, I need our experts in that space. And um, first starting with just connecting with them prior to school starting, like we've had before, what do we do the um, uh, play dates on campus, multiple play dates? How might we transfer that into a virtual space to get them up to speed and start to, to ramp them in? Um, and then that's where I, as a parent would say, okay, what does that look like? Um, on campus or off campus and have to make that decision. So I don't have a good answer aside other than we know that's a critical bit when this is kids first experience to learning. So no answer yet, a question to figure out. So question about masks, um, whether there would be a potential mandate for masks for all classes, including TK to two. What I do know is that preschool is um, strongly recommending kids wear them and they are wearing them at PUSD preschool on Design 39 campus. Right now, the mandate is third grade through 12th. And um, can there be a site specific mandate? Uh, a question to take back to um, district. So uh, we'll ask that with Doug in cabinet. Okay. Um, this question is the same homeroom teacher share time between virtual and in-person teaching or how are we gonna make that possible? Uh, say that one more time. So the question says, is the same homeroom teacher going to share time between virtual and in-person teaching or are they separate? I, yeah, I guess I'm not quite understanding the question. So the, same LED, the same LED uh, doing both virtual and in-person oh. teaching or are they picking one or the other? Picking one and collaborating. So I'm a virtual at home teacher and I'm working from home as the teacher and Sai, you're the on-campus teacher and we're collaborating between our classes. Um, question about the school start date. When would we know if it's 8, 19 or 9, 2? Yeah, I, I know the data is being collected by district um, and the hunch is that parents want to give um, sites more time to probably plan. So um, I don't have the data, but my hunch is probably a September 2nd. That's gonna be a decision made by uh, district and by um, our board of education. The question from new families, if there would be an opportunity to visit the campus with the kids prior to opening day so the child knows where they're going, especially if it's not first day of school, if they cannot go in with their child. We have the smartest parents. I love that idea. Let's figure it out. I don't know exactly, but if we do it under a certain number, I'm sure we could figure that out. This is where um, in, in a moment we'll talk with Casey. So can we take a pause? And uh, because that's not getting into site safety. And then um, Christina, if you see any themes from the YouTube channel from our friends joining there um, after Casey. So Casey, things you're thinking about from the collaborative, how we use budgets and how we're, you're thinking about safety specifically. Yeah, thanks Joe. Um, we're in the process of assembling a safety committee. Um, basically it'll be for medical professionals, doctors, and specifically one pediatrician from our parent community and um, Ms. Tara, who will be serve on the committee. And basically the goal of the committee is gonna be to assist the school and support the school with all the county and state mandates when, in regards to safety, but also to see if we can maximize safety at our campus and um, maybe go above and beyond the mandates and do, do something more to make families really comfortable with what's happening on campus. Um, and we're really, really fortunate that the collaborative has funds that we can use um, for this purpose. And, um, you know, we're dedicated to, the collaborative is dedicated to making um, on-campus learning safe for our students and our LEDs and the staff. And um, I, I have to put in a plug for the 39 days of giving there's going to be a lot of needs on our campus this year, whether it's virtual learning or um, on campus learning. Um, so we are moving forward with our fundraising efforts. So whenever the first day of school is, um, will be the start of our direct ask program. Um, and we really appreciate all the parent support. Um, uh, I think we're really going to need it this year and um, thank you in advance. Casey, appreciate that. It's great to have such talent. Uh, we have amazing superpowers on campus 
we, we half joke and half serious. It's not about cutting, copying and pasting. It's about what superpowers do you bring? And we have um, all kinds of uh, amazing doctors and um, support personnel that can really help us flesh that out. And not just for us, but for the entire district community that we can give uh, feedback in terms of what we learned um, and uh, lift that up collectively across the district. So we look forward to planning that out and sharing with you so that you feel good about the decision if that's your choice to have kids on campus. Okay, um, let's go with Christina. Any kind of big themes? We're at 741 now. Um, so any big themes that you're seeing and I wanna maybe then open it up to our families on the Zoom here. Um, pretty much the same themes that um, were on the Zoom chat. I copied some questions down for when we're designing. Um, how will communication occur? What will it look like for kindergartners that um, are not used to being on tech and how will that look? Um, uh, there were some questions about pods and how I, might we be able to accommodate for the pods. Um, I just explained in the comments that, you know, we're taking all this into consideration and as we are planning, we will do our best um, to look at the ideas from all sides. Yeah, so it's beautiful. So we, we're gonna capture all these comments that are coming through there, sides working diligently on the Zoom side and Christina on the YouTube channel. And that's not the only place we'll be collecting it. Uh, as you know, we like our design jams where we bring you together. So we'll figure out how to do that virtually to ensure that your voice is in that space. As you know, when we design for equity, uh, that means you have to design with the people in that space. You can't design it for them. It has to be designed with that empathy. And so that means first step is about noticing and you have to notice yourself. So what are the implicit bias that Joe, your principal has? And how do I set those back so that what can come up safely is the needs of our community. So that's what we're gonna be continuing to work on is designing with equity. Okay, um, Christina, thanks for that. Thanks, Sai. So let me jump into the next piece, which is just a, a uh, an example of what's coming your way. So I apologize, I just lost my slide there. Here we go. There it is. All right, so again, we'll come to this uh, slide shortly. It's all of your insights that you made with uh, returning to learning. So I wanna address a few of these and specifically um, one here at the end to ensure that we're uh, doing our work gracefully. So uh, this is the reopening guidebook. And I'm just gonna show you the first page. This is coming your way, a, a lot of beautiful um, information in there that's really gonna help uh, articulate for you. Message from our superintendent. So here are the things, just what you'll find inside of this book. The timeline, health and safety, uh, PPE protocols, uh, social emotional wellness, the learning models. So th they're fleshing this out because we just pivoted on the um, campus wide virtual learning opportunity. So that's gonna pivot in here, but this book is coming your way. And that's why I wanna meet again on Monday. So to see if there's any other questions specifically around safety prior to you making your decision. So this is coming your way. It's called the School Reopening and Safety Plan. So big thanks to Team PUSD for putting that together. Um, also then um, on each site across the district, so all 39 sites um, will have a reopening plan um, so what that plan looks like specifically for our site um, as we develop that, and that will be shared out with you as well. So that's coming site specific. So you'll have the full district version, and then you will have the site specific version that really speaks to our needs. Okay. And then uh, lastly, and then we'll open it up. I just want to probably touch on a few of these themes across. You can come back to this Padlet and look, and we can actually use this a lot to flesh out our work. So what will learning experiences um, for the half day look like? So we started to talk a lot about that. I think specifically I wanna talk, cause this is a health and safety one right here that I'm showing. Um, will there be time for a sufficient, um, what do you call it? Just cleaning and between sites, who will do that? Um, obviously we'll have to, our custodians involved with that. There's gonna be hand sanitizer, sanitizing stations across campus. How might we use outside spaces effectively? Uh, obviously mitigating for rain and heat. Um, there's going to be a, a special kind of machine that's um, electrostatic machine that goes into all of the learning spaces every day uh, that will help uh, mitigate uh, the COVID um, virus and um, 
So there's all kinds of things that we need to do. So between classes, yes, there'll be the best cleaning. Again, as we mentioned in our last conversation together was about mitigating also the high touch points. So can we keep doors open so kids aren't constantly touching doors, bathroom doors. And we don't have electric doors on our um, bathrooms. And uh, there are paper towels in the hallways. But there are hand blowers inside of the the bathroom. So we have to look at all those things, separating kids down the hallway. So a lot of safety things we're going to have to consider. Um, mask again. Um, so things like that. So we've talked about that. So this one here, health and safety measures on your campus. Um, you know, I, I put this one on specifically, and I like that it was a, a negative reaction or like a thumbing it down because I think this is critical as we and district look at this because one of the pitches was because it's a half day program, have parents do wellness checks at home to save on learning time. And that was like, mm, that doesn't resonate well. So we want to make sure that we're mitigating that, doing um, effectively and efficiently uh, temperature checks as one of the things that we can do to ensure that the kids are coming safely on campus. So that, so that was an interesting piece that we, we had there. Just budget considerations um, and cleaning. So things that are really helpful for us that we'll use in our planning. A uh, drop off uh, pickup. So will kids be allowed to be dropped off before campus opens? Will they be allowed to hang out in front of the gates unsupervised until gates open? Obviously we have to figure out a way to safely get kids in and into their learning spaces efficiently and safely. So they're not all congregating together. Now in the best way we can, right? Um, with physical distancing, with the reality of what we know kids do. They love to congregate. So um, versus being the hug police, right? How do we ensure that kids are taught effective uh, physical distancing while still maintaining that safe entrance and exit. So probably multiple gates, multiple entrances, like in and then out. And then um, as you understand, uh, volunteers on campus. So mitigating against a lot of adults coming on campus. So it would be having our kids come in uh, in a safe way. Another one that I, I feel is good just to look at things that aren't necessarily positive. But what it helps us understand is that all ideas are okay. As long as we get this opportunity to have a conversation around it, we're not gonna pound somebody and kill them like we would in social media. We're gonna have a dialogue and, and cognitive discourse around it like this one here, five up, 18 down. Well, let's figure that out. You know, parent temperature checks again. So let's figure out why that's not a, a resonating thing and figure out what is the best solution moving forward, okay? Over here on this particular slide, this green one, uh, what learning experiences are critical for at-home learning? And this describes it, 66 kind of votes saying like, this idea of connecting the home at home learning, virtual learning, Design 39 with the on campus, there's some magic there. So we're gonna to need to figure out a way to build that magic in around how do we and where do we and when is it efficient and effective to make that happen. So really critically designing for interaction with both home and on campus learning. Uh, centralized place, we hear that across the district. District has been pushing this as well, that you know, centralized place for that learning platform that was really critical, uh, empathizing with our parents, information overload, where do I go to get what information, my kids in third, then in eighth. And I think that's something we have to really figure out um, as a team and still have that autonomy that uh, teachers really value to communicate. So we'll need your help um, in, in doing that. Obviously the Design 39 campus culture design thinking, creative outlets, flexibility, uh, less focus on homework and busy work. So there's a lot of positivity around retaining that culture when we're on campus, even if it's for a staggered start. So these are things that are critical, uh, special, social, emotional, and things like that. Okay, I wanna talk specifically about this because it's great that we have this energy and advocacy. So at this point, this was about a virtual rally. And so there's a hunch that there might be some picketing and whatnot going off with the district. That's not helpful at this point. You're seeing that there's the empathy and designing. So you need to put the horses back into the barn. And what I'm calling on you as um, your leader and the person that you, I know, trust in and believe in is that we're moving forward in a really positive way. So the energy that I would love for you to do is send a letter to the board members, say, thank you for creating this space. Send a letter to the superintendent or to Carol or to Doug and to say, thanks. I know you're in a really massively complex space. They meet every day with um, the leadership for um, the PFT, the Poway Federation of Teachers. And so just all this constant communication to try to get it right. So right now, I'm pleased this is not gonna be helpful for us. So if you can really just double down on let's design this thing, we have the grace and the space to do that. So um, thank you for that. Um, and I know that was a critical bit as we're trying to figure out how do we advocate and navigate. And that's 
I think ultimately what helps to get us to this space, we call on our students to have agency and we call on you to have agency. And so the next place is where you can look me in the eye, right, so I'll stop sharing. So where you can look me in the eye and say, Joe and team, this is not going square. So now that pressure falls on us to figure it out with you and to design around that locally. Um, and then lastly is um, some interesting things here for this last column. What else is on your mind? Um, we've talked about this, um, children and virtual learning. I'm concerned that district only give us two options. It's no longer the concern. So what we're seeing is that um, we're in July, we're pivoting in a really positive direction. And so that's why I'd like to do a quick pulse check and then we'll get to everybody else. So with what you know right now, um, I'm gonna open up. Um, so we were at, here's the results again, 72% uh, nervous, 28% confident. Um, so I'm gonna relaunch that poll. Um, all right, how are you feeling now? And you could do the same in the YouTube. How are you feeling now? Are you feeling uh, nervous? Or are you feeling confident? Okay, so here we are, uh, everyone voted. So this is what we have is share results. So 30% uh, are feeling nervous and 70% are feeling confident. So those of you who are still feeling nervous, we're not done. There's clearly, we need to un unpack that and understand the 30% of our families that are probably feeling that way. So where do we collect that data? How do we unpack that data? probably <laughs> another Padlet wall, um, another way for us to have another dialogue on a Thursday, um, ways for us to maybe navigate that with your LED, um, your learning experience designer, a teacher. Um, remember they're on summer, they get paid for 10 months out of the year. They get three days before school starts, right? So I'm here 12 months, so I'm gonna help navigate that with you too. We also have Amy Richardson, our design facilitator, and Harmina, I will be excited to announce with you all as our new design facilitator, assistant principal. So we look forward to having them also co-design with our Welcome Center. So happy to see that that's changed, right? That's good. Um, I saw Sai, I saw he smiled. So uh, I think this is good, positive direction that um, folks are feeling a little bit more confident. Um, all right, so now, um, Anything that's really critical, so I think let's open it up first to our community here. So if you have a mic, um, you can unmute that and we wanna see you and hear you and appreciate you for coming into this Zoom session. So anyone in the Zoom have a comment, question, thought, feedback? You guys aren't shy. A lot of uh, Joe, a lot of people. Hi, Joe. Uh, hey, hi, Joe. Hi. hey, Joe. Can you hear me? Okay. okay. Who's? Oh, yeah. There you are. Hi. Uh, who's? I heard somebody else too. Yeah, but very quickly. I mean, do you have some more details on how the online learning works? You know, what are the hours? What is the schedule? What is the format? Anything you can share at this point? Yeah, I, I think not specifically yet because this is just information that came out today. Uh, for us specifically, there was uh, the district designed uh, virtual learning academy had uh, ways that I was going to more mirror a, a regular day. So we need some chance to flex that out what the online learning would be. So don't have an exact idea yet. Joe, I had a question. It's Miss Jakeway. Um, a lot of people are asking about um, what happens if someone tests positive, whether it's a teacher or a student in yeah. class and we're at school. But how does that has any of that been decided or has there been anything flipped around? It might be an option for, for folks if that happens. Yeah, so if a, a student tests positive, um, there's some guidelines that came out from the governor. Um, basically it's one kid in the classroom tests positive then that classroom closes. And then that classroom would go to um, basically distance learning, virtual learning. The beautiful piece though is if we're doing this collectively, that, that teacher now can partner up with the other teacher who's been doing the virtual learning and now can partner up. Now, the next regulation is if the school site has, uh, for us, it's probably three or four classrooms that close in that time, then we would work with the district and health per personnel to say, does the school close or not? So um, it's pretty strict in terms of if a student tests positive for COVID or a staff member, what happens? 
the more critical bit is how does how do we keep returning to learning? And so by the model we're looking at, by partnering up with the classroom teacher, you know, you're either in the virtual or you're on, the, on campus, if the, the campus closes or the classroom closes, there's still gonna be that learning going on. And I think that's another question that our parents have is like, if they have the sniffles, keeping them home for 10 days is not gonna be helpful for their learning. So how do we really mitigate that? Well, if we're solving our, our own problem here, then how do we connect them up with the virtual learning design teacher and then make that move forward? So. I feel we have more opportunities to solve our challenges, um, yet I don't have good answers other than they're pretty strict in terms of what I saw from the governor um, and the, the guidelines. Next question. So, uh, yeah, this is Michael Bradshaw to follow up on that. Um, if a kid uh, is in one of those classes where they test positive, what about the siblings of that kid? Yeah, you're, you're getting into the spaces that is beyond my knowledge at this point. Um, that's why I think we need uh, kind of that consultation group that Casey was talking about that we could really figure that out. And then obviously with the guidance of the district, um, I would imagine um, they're looking at doing testing of, the, of teachers and of um, on a regular basis. So I don't know what that exactly looks like, but when it comes to the, your own kids, you would probably quarantine them. I would imagine if it was my kid, I have two boys. If Christopher got sick with COVID, I would probably, I would keep Tristan home until he got tested as a family member. But you know, that stuff is all like um, to be figured out still. I don't have a good answer. Are you, you're smiling, so I guess you're okay with that for now. <laughs> Maybe not come August, but I think on July, whatever we are, 23rd, I can get away with it. All right, next question. Hi, uh, this is Del. Um... We're new to D39, and uh, forgive me if this was addressed earlier in the call, but um, how will our child be introduced to the teacher in person? Is there a plan for, yeah, I, I for can tell anything you what the plan like that? Was before, yeah, it's, we're kind of at the, the mercy of the guidelines of being able to physically get in a space. Um, so we know that's a tremendous need specifically for our new family. So again, welcome everybody, give a big round of applause. Um, we appreciate <sighs> the <laughs> coming to a brand new space that you knew before, and this is really different. We know that's important. Um, Julie Mori is here as a representative from our learning experience designer, so she's taking that down. Um, we heard about maybe having these virtual trips uh, uh, that are small, similar to what we did with the loft. We minimized the loft access during the summer until this latest closed down to about 10 people at a time, and that was able to navigate that. We had a way to mitigate you know, the number of students into that space. Um, so I, I know we could figure it out specifically we, with, with needs like our youngest learners getting to know the campus, getting to know their teachers. So thank you for that. Thank you. Joe, I had a question and I really do appreciate uh, that open letter you sent to the education board regarding uh, online for Design 39. Um, my question is, is it possible to, when we're put in these groups for online learning, to let the parents know uh, as soon as possible which other groups we're with so we can contact the other parents? And if they do the same things that we do, my family, then we can work out things where, since it's online, I can team up with other parents' kids to bring them over to my house on certain days to have kids team up with online learning? I thought, yeah, we saw some of those very creative ideas from our parents. So not necessarily doing the homeschool fully, but you're, you're doing homeschool by clustering um, because you can keep smaller class sizes, but yet you're you're keeping that, that collaborative, trusted family that you know that's, you know, has the same beliefs about you around safety and protocols. Yes, homeroom rosters, as quick as we can get those out to you as we redesign, uh, we think those ideas are fabulous. So more of that ideation is, is welcomed and appreciated. So it sounds like we need rosters out to you with ways like who's in your class specifically when you're virtual. Okay. Um, hi, Joe, I have uh, more of a comment than a question. First of all, really thank you for launching the D39 learning model. I think, you know, you saw that significant change and the flip in the confidence of the parents in the repeat poll. And um, 
a lot of emphasis ha- had been put, you know, and has been continued to put both in, you know, news pieces and in what we talk about the AAP putting out this uh, uh, request to for kids to return to in-person learning. And while I completely advocate that I myself am a pediatrician, so a- absolutely we have to advocate for, you know, return to in-person learning. AAP did put out a repeat statement today because people were using that to push for in-person learning by ignoring the science. And so AP came out today again to say that, yes, we advocate for in-person learning, but you are not to ignore the science. You have to continue to look at the data for your region, for your community, and keep that in mind and make it safe for your students to come back. Yes, you know, you want the students to come back, but you want them to come back safely. So I really want to emphasize that point. And keeping that in mind, I really think the AMPM model will, you know, even when that the cases come down below a certain number, the cases are still there. The disease is still there. So that AMPM model allowing for the social distancing, I think is a great idea. And I would, you know, really want to advocate for that. And hopefully the district agrees with it. Yeah, I appreciate that because I was guilty of using the pediatrician's document and our last meeting. So because as you know, having that self-reflection, I am biased towards on-campus learning. No, right? I am too. I, am biased, I completely right? agree with and, that. Yeah. Right. And I am biased towards wearing masks. And right, as you know, Joe has an opinion. And at the end of the day, I need to be careful of how much I influence parents because they have to make that decision. And what we noticed in the data when we gave parents that opportunity to have an AMPM model, it increased their confidence by 10%. So yes, I think that's a great message to the district around you know, seeing that this is um, an opportunity. I also, I feel bad that I also have another supervisor that helps me in the 6-8 space. That's Kimmy Luckfield. She came from uh, Santa Unified and has been a great advocate for our work as well. So if you ever get to meet Kimmy Luckfield, she's fantastic. And I know I'm, sorry, Kimmy, I'm butchering your last name. Um, next question, thank you for that. Uh, we <laughs> need to be data, data-driven data and um, ultimately these are your children. You need to make that choice that's best for your kids. And we're trying to create really authentic, viable options. Um, and our teachers are gonna work their darndest if it's on campus or if it's virtual, and we're gonna connect the dots between the two. I have a question. My name is Lynn and I have a kindergartner starting in the fall. And, um, and maybe this is something that I just haven't been able to fine tune in some of the fine print from the governor's decision of being off of that list or when, when San Diego is off and we're able to come back to in-person, what is the plan or is there something that has been determined if our numbers go back up? Are we closing down on campus and we're going back to virtual learning? And, and what point is there that up and down of open, close, open, close for, for that to not be especially something that could be really challenging for the young ones to like, well, what are we doing here? Are we, are we at home or are we not? I think that that can be something that might be a difficult adjustment for them. I agree with that, and I think that's great. Um, uh, we have Doug Johnson who's listening as well, and I will take that back to the district. Um, that having a consistent space of time to know that what you're committing to is really helpful for our families. One, so that you, as a as a person who's also trying to work, can make a decision on what that looks like, and the other is um, uh, just so that when schools do close, for how long, and having that understanding, because we know that. A transition for students while they're resilient we want to minimize those impacts so when we can have that decision of if a school gets closed we there's some sp- very specific right there's basically in our case three to five classes well then if there's 25 percent of schools closing then the district closes well that's all going to be kind of like we have to be flexible with that as that's coming and that's why I love the idea that we're solving this challenge because we're gonna have teachers who are working virtually at Design 39 and across the district that we're learning from. And at the same time, when we have to close, we're, gonna, we're not gonna be in a, the place we were when we did uh, distance learning in March. We're gonna be on a higher elevated space collectively for the families who need to now pivot back from on campus because they're gonna be collaborating with those same virtual teachers. And that's the beauty of this model is we are solving this challenge with LEDs who work together all the time. And one will be at home and one will be on campus. And those two homerooms or three or whatever it will, will figure out a solution, how to bring those students back up to speed for virtual learning. 
So I don't have the data specifically on the how long. What we do hear from you is that some type of consistency within the inconsistency is helpful. <laughs> All right, um, we're 8.05. Let's take one more from our community and then maybe we'll finish out on the YouTube, Christina. So anybody, last comment, our feeling, our sentiment? We love positive vibes, I'm telling you. I, th I think I got most of it. I'm just checking really quick to make sure there wasn't something I missed. So the question about how are the teacher LEDs feeling about in-person versus virtual on our campus, Joe? Yeah, you know, yeah, I have that. Yeah, sorry, Christina, you speak to that, please. Oh. Uh, well, you know, safety honestly is personal. So what is going on for each specific LED, it's hard to state. Um, everybody has very solid and good reasons for those of us that would not be able to come back um, when that's the option and others have good reasons why they would be able to. So we'll have to cross that bridge when it's time. Um, our top priority is our safety and that of our families, just like yours. I think what Brett Fitzpatrick, he also helps represent all the teachers when they're having the union negotiations. Brett Fitzpatrick, a uh, seventh grade LED said, please, Joe, make sure that the parents know we are here for you. We're making the best decisions for you. We want to make sure that, um, you know, if there needs to be a, a small a pivot because another teacher needs to pivot off of home school and come to, to on campus, I know our teachers will do that. And especially if we're doing these right mitigating effects. So um, our teachers are going to make the decisions that are best for our students. Our teachers are going to make, yeah. So um, I, I would be remiss if you know, I didn't share Brett's sentiment about how wonderful our parents have been to our community and to our teachers and supportive, and we wanna give that same effort back. Anything last, Sai? Um, I know hey, I wanna honor your- I got a your... comment here. Uh, you yes, sir. Start, hey, you there you are. Conversation with uh, hats on. All I can say is hats off even though I don't have a hat, but uh, you have a lot of uh, pain on our thought process here, especially with the virtual option, that, that's a key. And no doubt about it, design 39 virtual. And uh, in fact, I met uh, one or two parents out there uh, today and uh, we were just talking, oh, you know what, let's get on, let's, let's talk to him. Let's, let's make sure we are getting this. Um, but um, very fortunate to have um, such a great uh, LED team and principal and every, everyone who is empathizing that thought process here. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, right, it takes a lot of humility and vulnerability to pivot at a district level, right? So again, um, yep. so right, that's why we moved to Poway Unified. That's why we're at school. Like there's 39 amazing schools in Poway Unified because we have leadership that is listening. We have board who is listening and we have leadership that supports us. and what I shared in a text to Carol today is, I'll read it to you, right? You know me, I read all my texts. Um, Carol Osborne, and I said, um, she just wrote back, thank you for your partnership today, Joe. I appreciate you and your honesty. Um, you know, that's what we need. That's what I need in a leader. And that's what I feel I get is the tough conversations. You know, I'm a little bit, they know I'm an agitator. Right? And they know that I have um, an opinion about what school should look like. Sometimes I, I maybe more on the evangelist side of things, right? And someone said, I'm Joe is 85% uh, visionary and 15% pissed off. The reason being is that this is how important learning is. And when are we gonna have an opportunity again where we can actually transform education for the better? And when now we have this bottoms up approach where instead of schools trying to figure out the, the plan, now they're figuring out the plan within their ecosystem and they're designing and they're working through the ugly ambiguity of how do we figure out master schedule and how do we make all these things, connect the dots on all these things, bring people together. The smartest person is the room and that's what we're gonna be doing. And so I appreciate the vote of confidence. Um, and again, that's why I love being at Design 39. So hats off to us all. 
So uh, be on the lookout. We're going to have another meeting. Uh, clearly, we'll have a meeting just like the basic stuff as we unpack some more of this information that's rolling out from district. So Monday, we'll have a principal's office hours, 4 o'clock, K through 4.30 will be 4 or 5. This will be in an email. And then 5 o'clock, 6, 8. And then we'll have more information about what does the virtual learning plan look like for Design 39 with Design 39 teachers? What does it look like? Do we know um, who's rolling out? Um, who are the teachers who are teaching that? You know, all those things, the best that we can get. Um, all right. Whew. Yeah, I, that's my, my style, right? Is um, we got to get right in the middle of it. And um, that's how we're going to solve this. So I know I'll, I'll get beat up a couple of times um, as I shared with Carol. Well, we're going to stumble, but I know that we're going to pick each other up. Can I count on you guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Are we in this? Are we in this? Literally, are we going to make this thing work for the best of our ability? Yeah. Yeah. So those of you who are still feeling nervous, we need to understand why you're still feeling nervous. So I'm going to put out the I'm still feeling nervous Padlet wall and understanding what those things are. So if you're still feeling nervous, you're going to write those out. I'm feeling confident. You're going to write those things out so we can understand why are you feeling confident and why are you feeling nervous and how might we intersect those two? Fair enough. All right, yeah. I see thumbs up. All right, Rose McGuire, that's a cutie pie there. She gets, can I put her face on the screen? Miss Rose McGuire. I saw somebody really cute there. One of your little chitlins. All right, Joe? I guess she, yes. Hi, uh, this is Ashita. And I just uh, wanted to thank you and the LEDs, you know, uh, we parents came together and voiced our opinion and our, our uh, voices and our concerns and uh, we felt confident to come together and work on this uh, on bring on on voicing our opinions simply because uh, we knew that you were very receptive and even the leds you know and uh, it, it 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 just i mean i'm just grateful we all are very grateful uh, that we have you uh, as a leader at design 39 who listens to all the parents and uh, and thank you for giving us that confidence where we can share our concerns with you. So thank you on behalf of the parents that worked with me on the petition as well too. Yeah, yeah, um, she, I mean, you're amazing, right? So I get humbled when I look at, wow, these, wow, how eloquently written. They're like, wow, that's what they feel about Design 39. I'm like, I felt so proud that this is, it's not just, Joe sharing the Kool-Aid you guys are all like drank the Kool-Aid and I apologize and it's it's the best tasting Kool-Aid ever and and here you are dialoguing and 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 sharing out why it's so critical that we have this opportunity and you're passionate about it and it's not just coming from Joe it's coming from within the community and and then I feel like man we're moving in the right direction then so thank you yeah, for we, that we advocacy were... Yeah, it was, it was a bunch of parents who came together and we did this and it was not just me. And uh, I'm so grateful that we all could work together and put that out. And yeah, and I'm really grateful that so many parents supported that petition as well. So uh, from the bottom yeah. of our heart, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So Christina, I just put the Padlet to this current Padlet in the chat. So I don't know if you can post that back in the YouTube um, channel as well, if people want to click on the current Padlet. I will again... Um, if you're not getting emails, please email me. You're not getting the connect five or the connect ed messages from us um, because I put in the Padlet wall links inside of there um, and they're private links to our families. Um, so we try not to make those public so they don't get spammed. Um, so I think uh, I'm just gonna stay on, say hello. Uh, we took up hour and 15 minutes, but I think it's a really critical hour and 15 minutes. Final thoughts, um, I'm gonna leave it with Julie, um, our LED teacher, and I'll leave it with Casey, our collaborative Thank president. Thank you, Joe. So Julie, Julie, if you could Thank some you, final Joe. words. Oh, Thank you, Thank you, Julie, Miss Maury. I think um, Casey actually hit it on the nail there with amazing community. I mean, it's amazing, you know, we all together made this happen. So um, very much appreciated. And we're looking forward to making us 100% confident. And yes, we do want to listen to all the concerns so that we can see where we can um, get everybody up to what they need. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It's wonderful. 
And Casey, on behalf of the parents, Casey? Yeah, I mean, thank you to our amazing community, LEDs, staff, parents. Um, I'm just blown away by um, your advocacy and your passion um, to the D39 goals. Um, anyway, I'm blessed to be a part of this community and um, let's keep it up. And I, I know that we can do this. We can get through this next year together. So I'll just end with this. If you could do me one favor, send these folks a thank you note. Michelle, Ginger, TJ, Kimberly, Darshana, Emily. They, they don't get paid a lot, right? They're public servants. You know, send us send a message to this person, Dr. Phelps. Wow, to be in your shoes, right? Empathetically. So appreciation to uh, district leadership and to our families and to y'all. So thanks, Casey. Thanks, Sai, for moderating. And um, we'll probably have another chat next week. Okay, team. So um, I'll stay on for a minute and uh, I'm going to close out the YouTube channel. Thanks, friends. Thank you. Thank you.